what you wanna believe, then you can leave it up to me, and I'll give you the key. It's easy. Just keep on hopping, keep on rocking, and don't start stopping. Krista, super excited to have you on the show. I've been following you for quite some time. You say a lot of things that are near and dear to my heart. I'm sure that all the people that listen to me, if they went and followed you, they'd be like, oh, okay, here it is. Um, so I'm really excited to have you here because we're going to dive into hopefully all the things, but all oh, things yeah. dieting, all things fitness, all things misinformation, you name it, we're probably going to crawl all over the topic today. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. It's not often that I get to be on the other side and be the one being interviewed. So I'm very excited and I appreciate the opportunity. That's always a fun thing. I don't know why, because, yeah. you know, usually as podcasters, we're, we're coming up with topics and all these things. And sometimes it's nice to have somebody drag things out of us. And then we're like, oh, sweet. Yeah, I yeah. like that. <laughs> totally, for sure. So who are you? What do you do? What got you going in the direction that you're going and got you into the health and fitness space? Okay, so loaded set of questions to get us started. And like we were saying pre recording, we could probably go on and on just on this part of my journey and how I got here. But I'll give you the Cliff Notes version. I was your typical millennial who, post graduating from college, I never did anything with fitness. It was purely a side hustle. I went into a finance job, I was sitting behind a desk. And I hated it. I couldn't sit still. It was not for me. I felt like I wasn't getting enough interaction with other people, but a through line of my entire story as young as like 17 years old was that I always had some sort of group fitness instructor position. So in college, I did it as like a work study and it was a way to make a little extra cash. I taught a class that now I would laugh if I would any encourage anyone to do this to get any kind of body comp results, but it was a fun workout. It just, you know, depends on the goals. It was called Piloxing, which is Pilates mixed with kickboxing. Very interesting. I know you can ask me about that if you want. Um, but basically I moved from, I was going to college in Virginia. I'm originally from New Jersey. I eventually from Virginia moved to Charlotte, North Carolina. And when I was living in Charlotte, I thought, you know, I don't have a lot of friends in this city. I'm working in finance. I was in kind of a cohort of other people who were my age and had just graduated college at the time as a way to kind of make friends. That was one avenue. But another for me was I wanted to find a community when it came to fitness. And so just naturally by exploring different gyms, I was very into the boutique fitness space, just given that background and always teaching group fitness. I eventually would transition from being a client at various gyms into an instructor. And the one that kind of catapulted my career to go all in on fitness was with a company called Burn Boot Camp. I was initially a client there in one of their Charlotte locations. The owners I was working out with at the time asked me to come train with them. Eventually they opened another location. They asked me to run it. Fast forward about a year and a half and a lot of personal changes later that we can certainly get into too, because it's relevant to my story. I decided that I was no pun intended burnt out from that position. And I also realized for most of my clients and myself, the working out piece, we had that covered. What we didn't have a handle on was our nutrition. And that is really where my own company, the fitness fix kind of came to be. And when I first started working with clients one-on-one, -on -one, it was because I gave them like this little taste of nutrition coaching through that boutique studio burn boot camp because we offered a nutrition service, but it was like rapid fire, 10, 15 minute meetings where you would sit down with a client in between classes, talk about macros real quick, take a peek at their, my fitness pal and tell them to come check back with you within four weeks. I myself had an experience in working there and working out there as a client with a coach that was way more in depth than that because I hired somebody outside of it through an online coaching space. And I just saw amazing results. People started coming up to me and they're like, you're doing the same workout as us. Why do you look different? 
And that's really where everything kind of started for me. And then, you know, a very typical story of COVID and all that stuff that happened, just the cards kind of fell that it made sense to really focus a little bit more online in the last two to three years. Okay. So there's, we could go down so many spaces yeah. just w- with this. And so we'll kind of piggyback on some of the things you had to say, but, but I love that you brought up that they were do you were doing the fitness, but the nutrition portion was missing. And I find mm-hmm. that is a huge pandemic in and of itself in yeah. the current fitness space, because people are going to work out and they're doing the workouts and like, well, then I don't see the results. And it's because it's all encompassing and it's all encompassing so huge. And I'm sure you can elaborate on this. Uh, it's not just nutrition. It's not just fitness. It's stress. It's all of these other things. It's lifestyle factors. It's your relationships. It's your environment. Like you could even have per se the fitness and nutrition, right? But if your fitness and nutrition is right and you're only sleeping two hours and you're running like crazy, you're not going to probably see results. You might at first, but down the road, Mm -hmm. it's going to come back and bite you as well. Yeah. And that last bit was my story. So I really thought I had a very good understanding of nutrition and, you know, different ages, different stages in your life brings different sets of problems and priorities. And I always joke with my clients today, what I could get away with at 22, I can't get away with at 30 years old. And that just changes as you age. And it's, it's not to say, oh, somebody's old, but it's just, we're here for longevity. And you need to understand how all of those other factors that you mentioned, you said the big two S's for me, sleep and stress. I was not prioritizing those in the very early part of my own fitness journey where I added nutrition into the mix. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like looking back on it, I could get away with it for some time. That some time turned out to be about a year. And what I now see today with a lot of my clients is that just like you said, it is kind of a pandemic in and of itself because they'll join a boutique fitness concept. They'll see really good results for maybe about six weeks. And then all of a sudden they get really stuck. And I think that one of the big reasons why people are getting stuck is because if you think about who those classes are marketed to, it's a type of workout that is better for someone who is very well recovered and not constantly on the go. And yet that's not who it's attracting. So Mm -hmm. that in right there in lies the biggest issue with it. It doesn't mean that it's not for people. And I want to be super clear on this because every time I have this conversation, even with clients, there's a lot of, but what about this? What about that? It's very specific to your goals and your environment, your personal life, all these other factors that we're describing. If you are the person who is pretty much on the couch all of the time, very, very, very sedentary, and you think that the group fitness environment is going to get you excited, it's, it's going to get you motivated to get into a routine, have at it and go for it. But just know that that is not the same as having maybe really specific body composition goals when it comes to actually changing the shape of your physique, right? And looking at some of these other factors. So I was actually saying to a client today, it's almost like you go through these phases as things transition in your life and you get better at fitness and learning more through that process. You start to mature and the stakes get a little bit higher. So what worked for you when you were younger, it also worked for you then because your fitness maturity, let's call it, was really different. You were green, you were that newbie and you can ride that out for only so long. And for me, unfortunately, it turned into, I was just really pouring from an empty cup and I got into one of the lowest body fat percentages of my life and I was super lean and I felt really great. I look back at photos of myself now from that time and I'm like, I look so skinny And I really appreciate my muscle a whole lot more, but I also know how not sustainable that entire route was Connie, because fast forward, not even two and a half years later, the stress situation, the lack of sleep situation, I wound up quitting that job that I mentioned, canceled my wedding, called off my entire engagement, moved from Charlotte back to New Jersey and my fitness and nutrition and going through that experience truthfully wasn't a priority. I gained 45 pounds within less than two years. And I was like, woke up one day, I'm like, what happened to me? And it's taken now this journey in the last two and a half ish years, I would say at this point to really kind of reprioritize all of the other elements and all the other different levers that we can pull when it comes to addressing our fitness and nutrition and that entire journey, like you were just saying. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And there's so many directions we could even go with this because I I have personal friends that are group fitness instructors and excuse me, they, um, 
they are doing like five to 10, however many classes a day, mm -hmm. then they're like, oh no, I'm re I'm prioritizing my sleep and my stress. I'm like, no, you're not because five of these high intensity, whatever kick yoga, whatever you're doing, <laughs> right. you know, is not healthy, especially when you're a parent and you're trying to get kids to their sports and you're trying to also work another full-time job and you're trying to do all these things and it eventually it comes to a head but what people are seeing on the internet is discipline and if you don't do, you'll fit it in if it's important whereas I do I do believe there's a lot to that there's a huge amount to that um however people are taking the times of discipline and the times of priority in the wrong setting and in the wrong way Mm hmm. Yeah. I think just discipline should be defined to include getting at least seven hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. And that was the part I had to learn the very hard way. And it's mm -hmm. become a little bit of a joke with my clients because I'll preach to them on and on and on about prioritizing their sleep. But I always caveat with it. This is the one area where I don't want you guys to necessarily learn from me because I still have to really make an effort to prioritize this aspect of my wellness it's just something that even in transitioning and not being in the group fitness space to the degree that I was today, I have flexibility on what time I can wake up and that sort of stuff. But I'll totally be the person who's like, well, I'm working on building my fitness fix business and mm -hmm. wanting to grow our client base. So 10 o'clock at night, I get an idea for an email. I'm going to jump back on my computer. I'll wear my blue blockers, but I should know better than to mm -hmm. recognize that like, Hey, you have to, at some point you have to unplug and you have to shut off. Yeah. The plight of the entrepreneur. I was just mm -hmm. ruling my business hours to be earlier to fit my Eastern time clients. So I know exactly how this goes. But I'm sure. So overall it came to a head for you though. That looked like mm -hmm. weight gain, but uh, I mean, in turn, your mess becomes your message a little, but let's talk about this. Cause you said this sure. was what, like two years ago, you're obviously still working on things. You talk about that a lot. What have you learned from this experience as far as fitness and weight loss goes? Absolutely. Love this question because it's the perfect segue to talk about the power of reverse dieting. And that was really something that I never explored. So two things I'll say to just kind of bring this all together. If I could boil it down to just two big, like take home points for people listening to this, learn the power of reverse dieting, but also learn the importance of working with a coach, even when you're not necessarily in pursuit of fat loss. Mm -hmm. And that was something that if I could go back, I actually recently did a podcast on this. That was like, if I were to start my fitness journey over again, here were the four things I would pay attention to. And this one was the first one, my experience of having a nutrition coach in my life. When I first got started with it, I was always signing up for a 12 week program and it wasn't necessarily like a group coaching or anything. It was so personalized. I was getting the touch point with the coach. It was very custom, but I never really understood because at that time I was not a certified nutrition coach. I was specifically only in group fitness and that was my wheelhouse. I didn't really understand that once I got to a certain weight, simply by manipulating my macros, I had to have an exit strategy and I could sit here and I could blame the coach and say that that was something that they should have kind of coached me through, but it was a large company that wasn't their business model. Most of their programming was typically 12 weeks and shit. I saw really good results. The first time I learned how to track macros, I hadn't dieted that way before. So I lost 12 pounds. I want to say. And it, it worked in quotes, right? But everything mm -hmm. works until it doesn't. And I realized in the better part of these last two years that hiring a nutrition coach for me had a lot to do with accountability and still does that I have a nutrition coach today. And it also just has to do with learning how to navigate not dieting because mm -hmm. the not dieting piece. And when I say dieting, to be clear to your listener, I mean, actually being in a calorie deficit. I don't just mean like all encompassing, referring to tracking your food or keto or intermittent fasting mm -hmm. or whatever, but truly being in a deficit, that's not a place you can live all the time. And you have to learn how to go through these seasons to determine when is it appropriate to diet? When mm -hmm. is, when should we be focused on trying to build muscle? How does that relate to your personal life, your social calendar, holidays, birthdays, all of those things. And for me, I had never really learned what it looked like to reverse diet. And so in around like the beginning of 2021, I want to say, I decided to rehire a nutrition coach. I had taken a break even from fitness entirely. I took like six or seven months off from working in this space too, because I just kind of wanted to get away from it for a little while. And I hired a coach. I got back into the gym and for an entire year, 
all we did was increase my calories, mostly because I was very all over the place with my food intake and trying to launch this current business that I have today. I would go through days where I could never understand how people were like this before, but I wouldn't eat for hours and I'd skip meals because I'd be heads down on my computer trying to, you know, do sales calls back to back with client meetings, whatever, you name it, you get it. Mm -hmm. And my intake was just super sporadic. Hunger would become an emergency. So some days it could look like 13, 1400 calories. And then I'd get to the end of the day and feel like I was essentially on the verge of wanting to binge eat because I was so hungry. Other days I'd hit more like 2000 calories, give or take. And I couldn't really get consistent with that. So for me, step one in working with that coach again was learning how to find the right amount of calories that was doable to the point where I could be adherent and compliant to that actual process. Mm -hmm. Forget the end result. Yes, we focus on body composition, but I also did that through training. Mm -hmm. I went into the gym and for the, honestly, the first time in my life, because even when I think back to my first for it, counting macros and tracking food and working with a coach, I was still doing those boutique fitness classes. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't really taking a more, you know, bodybuilding style approach that is intended for body recomp. Mm -hmm. So I tackled that alongside of that reverse diet of working my calories up. And then fast forward a year, we finally decided it made sense to diet. I had a friend's wedding that I was traveling out of the country for. And I was like, this could be a good goal for me. It was the first time in my life that weight actually came off as fast as I ever wanted it to. So for as much as it sucked, if you have mm -hmm. clients that listen to this, this is a PSA to them mm -hmm. that if your coach is encouraging you to stay the course and be patient and really trying to get you to buy into this process, I promise you what's on the other side is so worth it because while yes, I don't look at myself. And like I said, I look at those photos from years ago and I'm like, I don't ever want to look like that per se, because mm -hmm. my goals and priorities and my body image has shifted and how I look at myself has shifted. But what I do feel like I have a lot more power in is that I don't need to be like so tight up against these exact macros that if I don't track and I don't eat those things to a T all the time, that I'm on the verge of gaining five pounds, gaining 10, trying to lose a few here and there. It's much more livable. And then when I am ready for that deficit, both mentally, physically, even emotionally, right? Cause there's an emotional aspect to it too. I don't have to drop down to like 13 to 1400 calories to make that happen. Cause let's be real. I just talked about how hard it is to be compliant. That's a, an area of calories. That's a range that is that much harder to be compliant. And again, it depends on what your current weight is and all that, but you know, you can take some of the numbers I'm throwing out with a grain of salt, but at the same time with what's worked for me, I've just really kind of unlocked that for myself and have then been able to pass it along to my clients too. So there's so much I love about this. And I'm so glad that we we're talking about it today because the reverse diet is huge and it doesn't mm -hmm. happen overnight in people's no. heads, especially when you're coming from a place of trouble of consistency, uh, people that have not really established a ha a daily habit or a consistent pattern. Like all of these are learned behaviors and some of them take time. And mm -hmm. a lot of these women that I personally work with, and I'm sure you're working with too, have gone through the diet roller coaster over oh, yeah. and over and over again. And they've gotten to this place like where they feel like they have quote unquote tried everything and they've been doing all the things and stuff. But the problem is, is now we have to undo everything they've been doing and then start completely over. And that takes a large amount of time and people don't realize that. So I will like you, I mean, some of my clients, I end up having in a phase for a year. And they're like, when they sign up, a lot of people, I think have that 12, eight week, 16 week mentality, mm -hmm. when really, it takes so much more than that. Think of how many years you've been dieting. I mean, I don't know about you, Krista, but I started the freaking slim fast diet when I was like 15 years old. Oh so yeah. How, I tried how... like some 17 day diet when I was getting ready for my prom. Like it uh -huh. starts so young, unfortunately. Yeah. So here I had 35 years worth of dieting mm -hmm. history that I needed to replace with good habits and reverse dieting. And people somehow anticipate that's going to happen overnight. And, and the consistent part of it's not there. So it takes more and more time. And they're like, sure. well, when am I going to lose weight? I hired you to help me lose weight. And it's like, well, please be patient because amazing things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. And I just to give you the listeners in case they haven't heard or don't know a piece of my story. I was in bodybuilding for a long time. Okay. I cut 
to single digit body fat. I was a figure. Yeah. My very last show, I was peeled out of my mind. I think every vein in my body showed. And like you, I look back on that now and I'm like, oh, that's, I look right. sick, you know? Yeah. Uh, it, it grosses me out, but it took me three solid years of reverse dieting myself and taking really good care of my body because my metabolism was tanked. So now people see me eating 3000 calories or losing weight. If I miss a meal, which blows my mind, never in a million years, what I think that I would be <laughs> there um, losing weight. If I miss a meal and they're like, well, must be nice, but they don't realize that a lot of work got put into the backside of that to arrive right. at this place where now, if I actually wanted to get lean, it probably wouldn't be very hard to me. I'd probably be dieting at like 2,500 calories because yeah. I've trained my metabolism to act that way. Right. And why we're saying it's not hard. I think this is the important point to emphasize for people is because if you actually take a second and by a second, I mean, let's call it seven to 10 days to track your food intake, even on the weekend, when you're going out to eat 2,500 calories, just not intentionally is a very realistic number of what you may be consuming on a daily basis. And you don't know that if you don't track your food. Mm -hmm. So the reason why we're saying that the dieting phase would then not be that hard is because from a perspective of being able to be consistent and to actually follow the protocol, that number is way more attractive than trying to restrict yourself to say even 1700 calories. And trust me, I have clients that diet on 1700 calories. They're newer to the game. They don't have the three-year runway like you just described for yourself, right? Mm -hmm. They also might not have nearly as much muscle as somebody like yourself does. So that's going to be another factor. But what I always remind my clients, and I've had this conversation even a few times today, is the physique you really desire is not going to come out of one reverse diet, one calorie deficit phase, and then exiting that and going into maintenance or even back into reverse. You probably need to go through that at least two to three times. And that's also not factoring in some of the other reference points we were providing and talking about the biofeedback around sleep, stress, you know, all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's such a huge thing. And like, I like that you brought up the amount of muscle. Like there's a huge, I mean, I'm 149 pounds as of this morning. Oops. Um, <laughs> there's another one of those, whoops, miss a meal. You're in trouble. Um, it, but I'm 133 pounds of lean mass. Like I That's am amazing. Like good for you. <laughs> I'm a brick and my brick requires a lot of food. And there's also right. a big difference on your caloric intake people are like oh must be nice to eat 3000 calories a day but when that's 210 grams of protein it's not nice anymore mm -hmm. you know so there there's a there's a give and take to everything there's a give and take to nutrition there's a give and take to the phases of dieting and like you just said there's going to be times to push and there's going to be times to pull back and you can't just chronically stay in this this de this deficit all of the time and continue to see results yeah. And I also think what you just mentioned about not chronically staying in a deficit is another good point to address because there are people, depending on your body composition, like take somebody who's the polar opposite of yourself of what you described. And let's say they're also really just a naturally smaller person. I have clients that are 110, maybe even 112 pounds. Mm -hmm. But the cool part for them is they came into me eating about 1200 calories and Math is math, science is science. We could sit here and argue that that actually is a realistic amount of energy expenditure for that person and therefore calorie intake. Like it's kind of aligned. Like we don't want to poo poo 1200 calories all the time. Right, right. But again, we live in a world where food is abundant. You have so much access to it. So from an adherence perspective, even that smaller person is likely not truly consuming those 1200 calories. Mm -hmm. So how do those people ultimately win? Well, if we can get that person who is 110 pounds consuming more like 2000 calories, well, guess what? Now we take them into a deficit and that deficit is 1700 calories, which that's amazing for them. And they're like, I'm never going back. Like they have found so much freedom in the fact that they can now really be more thoughtful about the food choices they're making yet still have some flexibility too. Mm -hmm. But what you said about protein, 
is huge. Like when I tell my clients where my calories are at, I'm eating 23, 2400 calories a day, Mm -hmm. but it's 175 grams of protein. Mm -hmm. When you're sitting there telling me you can barely get 130, like don't compare what that journey is going to look like. Right. Mm -hmm. Because we still have some work to do and we can get you there, but it just takes time. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. You have to remember at the end of the day, that however you plan on getting to that goal, you're committing to doing that for life. Mm -hmm. So if you don't like that, then you're completely defeating the purpose. Like it doesn't matter how fast you get there. If the entire time you hate it, you're white knuckling it, whatever, because that was the method and approach we took to get you from point A to point B. So if you're really stuck on the fact that like, I don't know if I could do this for forever, we need to completely have a brand new conversation and reevaluate how you're thinking about this. You nailed it. And I say the same exact thing. Actually, I just have a new client and she, um, she's telling me how she binge ate all weekend long sugar. And we're talking her fasting insulin through the roof. She's pre-diabetic at this point. Mm -hmm. And, um, her, her, she's like, yeah, I binge ate all weekend, but she's like, I want, she's like, I decided this is what I want to do. I want to do the AIP diet. And why did she pick that? Because she wants to get her inflammation down. And I was And I was like, okay, I was like, but I don't want this to be the last supper mentality. Let me explain some things to you about this. You already have not been eating clean, right? So you're eating whatever, like she told me she ate a whole bunch of like ice cream and a whole thing of like Oreos and like all these things. I'm like, you haven't even cleaned up your basic diet. So why do we need to go to the other extreme Extreme. in order to take care of it? You're probably, Mm -hmm. if you start getting enough protein, eliminate some of the sugar consumption, take things from 10 grams of protein today to a day to 130 protein protein a day, you're probably going to be right off the bat doing a whole lot better than you are. So I said, I don't want to encourage these binge eating mentalities or this, I can't wait till it's over mentality by going from one extreme to the other. Right. There's a ton of low hanging fruit in between with what you referenced and saying she has a lot that she can already adjust and clean up. And what people really don't recognize until they actually live it and start to experience it for at least four to six weeks is if you can address your protein intake, you're going to start to feel fuller. If you start to feel fuller, what's the domino effect? Those binges may be less likely to happen because you're not as hungry. Your hunger doesn't feel like an emergency. Your insulin isn't, you know, your glucose levels are not spiking up and down so much throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if you want to attack the root cause of the behavior you're trying to change, you might need to do it. That's not in a way that's not even apparent to you because look at what her reaction was, right? Like Mm -hmm. her first thought was, Oh, let me go to this complete opposite end of the spectrum, which I only encourage an AIP diet when somebody is facing an autoimmune issue Mm -hmm. or they have like some serious gut health stuff going on. And we've tried everything else before we've gotten to that point. I'm even Mm -hmm. talking in the world of gut health too, the first question I ask people is, do you eat standing up and do you eat fast? Because if they can't tell me that they're good at sitting down, not eating distracted, actually chewing their food, that's the low hanging fruit to address before we talk about, okay, let's go low FODMAP. Let's try AIP. Let's remove gluten, dairy, however you want to approach that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's talk about the other end of the spectrum because we do live in a social media world and Mm -hmm. I have seen you talk about this. Uh, but it is also in the boutique fitness, not just boutique fitness, but because we're talking about it, that's what I'm going to bring up. You have things like CrossFit and group fitness and all these things. Many people become obsessed with these things and they begin to do it every day. They do this really super sympathetic, dominant exercise. They check that box. They go to their stressful job. We brought up stress. They're counting macros meticulously. My fitness pal says I need to eat 1400 calories. So I've been doing that. And I feel like there's also a control factor that goes on for the other people that are on the other end of the Mm -hmm. spectrum where they're trying to control their body and what it does. And after a time, as you stated, it happened to you, your body's like, we're not doing this anymore. Yeah, this is such a great topic. I have talked about this a lot and I'm glad you're bringing it up because it's actually something I want to get back to and just kind of revisiting my story and things I share on social media. We touched on the stress piece, but I'll take that point a little bit further because that has a lot to do with this as a problem, let's call it. 
someone going to any of those group fitness classes that are very high intensity, they don't provide a lot of time for you to rest between sets. You're moving from one exercise to the next. Everything is structured in that as many rounds or as many reps as possible style format. And then, like you said, they're running off to this responsibility, that job, the next thing. And it's just constant go, go, go. I find the way we want to think about our approach in changing everything for that person, it starts with their mindset. And it's like, okay, you check this box and you do actually have this really great habit. And with a lot of my clients, I say to them, your perfectionism, because that's really what this is. And that sense of wanting control, your type A personality is both a blessing and a curse because you look at people who do CrossFit, a nutrition coach that I really admire. He actually posted something about this today. That was great. And he was mentioning how uh, a lot of nutrition coaches or just other personal trainers will make fun of CrossFit. And he's like, you are actually are missing the mark because CrossFitters tend to be very dedicated people and they really love their community. So if you're trying to build your own online business, you could kind of take some cues from that environment. And often those clients are some of your best clients because they're already so committed to that one piece of their routine, the fitness piece. Mm -hmm. But that's where we say to the person, that's the benefit, right? You already have a passion for this. You enjoy it. You see the benefit of moving your body but there is an extreme to which it can go too far. And that's when you really have to ask yourself, is this serving me? And how do you really answer that question? We always have to go back to what's your ultimate goal. So if your ultimate goal is just really changing the shape of your body and trying to see those physique changes, you need to ask yourself, if you don't like what you're currently seeing in the mirror, but you've been doing this specific routine for the last two years, three years, The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So when you really step back and think about that, you want to say to yourself, hey, let me take these really good character traits of mine and apply them to macros, to working out, but just experiment a little differently. Be a little open-minded, try something new. And I could go on and on about this because it took me so long and so much resistance And that's actually why I stepped away from fitness for six months when I moved back to New Jersey, moved back home to my, be closer to my family and just really tried to reflect on like, what the hell do I want out of my personal life in a partner and my future self and who that person is, but what do I also want out of my career? And I just felt like I had lived in this really big extreme of being so on point with my macros, always showing up to the gym, never missing classes and on and on and on and checking every single box. For me, I felt like I couldn't hold myself to that standard when mentally and emotionally I had so much that I was trying to work through that I was just like, I can't find this gray area. So a lot of what I've learned in the last two years of my journey has been actually using those superpowers of being type A and being a perfectionist to live in the gray area. Mm -hmm. And the gray area can be very hard. It can be just like getting started, like people that have yeah. overwhelmed because they don't know how to go to the gym. They don't know how to do cardio. And, and I can really, uh, relate this with bodybuilding because when you're in a contest prep for 16 weeks, you eat the same freaking thing every day. You do all the things sure. like it's check the boxes. It has to be perfect because you don't want to get on stage and look like you've been eating cake. Like I didn't want to, I wanted to know that I did not let myself down as part of my type A problems, you know? Uh, but then you get out of that and you're like, Oh wait, now I don't have a goal and this is why you see competitors they constantly go back into this this circle of death I should call it uh, (laughs) because they're using that to have a goal to have a reason to have to do things and that's not how it necessarily works so that gray zone is really a hard place to find balance when you feel like you need to have some kind of carrot dangling in front of you Mm -hmm. to get you where you need to go Yeah. And I really love that you pointed that out because I will say in the last year, that's probably something I've even been struggling with in my own fitness journey, because I've just been going through the motions a little bit. And it's not because I don't care about prioritizing my health and wellness, but it's because I've taken a lot of the type A personality and the desire to achieve more and be successful and shifted it into business. Mm -hmm. And what I've really wanted to try to find for myself is like, I hate using the word balance because it doesn't exist to me. Like it never will. You talk to your clients or parents, like it's, we're not going to like paint a picture of everything in rose colored glasses. That's just not how it works. But 
it's really trying to ask yourself, okay, like you've taken that goal oriented side of your brain and shifted it towards setting up all these goals for growing your team, having a certain number of clients, building your podcast, building your brand, whatever it is. Awesome. But how do you do that? And also find something that's going to help you in the boring work. And Mm -hmm. I say to my clients a lot, there are certain points where we just kind of have to put our heads down and just do the things. Mm -hmm. And that is getting our sleep, getting steps in, hitting a protein target. It's the basic stuff. It's not sexy. It's kind of boring, but here's where this all ties back to the end goal that you want. Whenever you figure out what that end goal is, let's just say it is fat loss. And maybe you don't have the timeline. Like that's been my thing. I haven't really had this timeline that I'm trying to hold myself to, to be like, well, yeah, I'd really like to lose a little bit of body fat. And I'd like to do it by this date. Like I didn't have some sort of event coming or a trip where I was kind of like, I really want to feel my absolute best by that point. And I've had this conversation with my nutrition coach and we just got to the point two weeks ago, summer ended. And I said to him, I'm like, okay, we need to like come up with a goal together because I don't really know where to go with this. And I feel like I just need a timeline because otherwise I'm feeling a little bit like blah about the whole thing. Cause I know what to do, but it's like the difference between going into the gym and actually pushing yourself to failure on all of your sets or adding weight to whatever reps you're and exercises you're doing Mm -hmm. versus, versus just kind of like checking the box of actually showing up and working out. Mm -hmm. But to elaborate on that and I can see how you feel about this but I feel like so many people get stuck on an end goal that they skip the middle steps and they just try to get to the end goal rather than fully embracing the day-to-day things and doing a good job like there's a big difference between training and doing a workout and getting through a workout like I mean you and I can both go do 10 leg extensions for example we might do them very differently like say maybe I'm in a hurry and I just want to get the hell out and so I put it on you know 10 pounds and I do 10 legs extensions times three sets I check the box I got it done I got out that is going to get me closer to a date or whatever it might be, but Mm. is it actually going to get me closer to the look that I want by that date by just going through the motions? So I feel like sometimes we get too stuck on an end goal or um, a date or whatever it may be, instead of being waking up in the morning and being like, Hey, I should actually do a really great job with my numbers today. I should go to the gym and I won't skip any sets. I'll see how hard I can push myself through this set. And then the following set, let's see what we can do. And sure. really embracing the, those day-to-day moments because ultimately those manifest so much bigger than just getting to that end goal. Right. And again, that's going to tie back to what's the purpose of a coach in your life. Mm -hmm. I personally see myself and I see my own nutrition coach, even my business coach as playing those roles for me so that Mm -hmm. I don't feel too stuck going through the motions. And even when I don't have that specific timeline in sight, I can still have some kind of focus and have a good barometer Mm -hmm. of, did I give this my best effort? And is my best effort enough for what I want to achieve? Let's just say eventually. Right. And that's a type A thing. Now, now I'm yeah. interviewing you. Here we go. Right. Uh, that's like totally a type <laughs> A thing though. Right. Because you never feel like it's enough. Like exactly. you're always wondering and that's okay to be that way, but that's where coaches are huge. I just like you I have the same kind of c- conversations with my coach. Like it's, it's a big thing and that they, they are great. He's like, no, Connie, we should have this conversation over and over again because that is where the champions are made. He's like, I love that. Just, he's like, it's okay for us to have this conversation. It's okay for me to be like, chill out. It's okay for me to rein you in. And I want to keep having these conversations because the day we are not is the day that that spark has died. He's like, Mm. so he's like, so let's keep having these conversations. They can be great, but you know, they can also be a curse. Yeah, totally. That's powerful. And you're right that from his seat as the coach, that's a good litmus test for him to know, like, are you really in it? And I think that is a good reminder to anybody who, who does currently have a coach, whether it's one of your clients or one of my clients who's listening to this or someone considering having a coach, it's really important. I'll steal this right from my own nutrition coach that you participate. There's a difference between having a coach and actually participating and doing the work because we can't do it for you. 
Mm -hmm. I love those participating clients. I mean, we all have those MIA people. They sign up and you message them and they never message you back and you tell them to set up a check-in and they never do it. Or you have people that, you know, sometimes they message you like a hundred times a day. And sometimes you're like, oh boy, I don't know that I can answer this today. (laughs) But then you're like, but they're learning so much. And those people over time just are able to take control of their situation and run because they were looking for all the tools they needed for their toolkit to go build their house. Mm -hmm. And ultimately we want you to get to a point where you can do this on your own. That's how we know that we did our job as coaches. Mm -hmm. I tell all of our fitness fix clients, we want to empower you Mm -hmm. to have the skills. You go through that cycle that I described of maybe it's multiple rounds of reversing, being in a deficit, going back to maintenance. And then you have the blueprint that you can walk away a year from now, a year and a half from now. And you can kind of look at us as the training wheels. You take Mm -hmm. those training wheels off. You go at it on your own. And if you get to a point where this was what happened to me, something else in my life shifted so significantly that it was important that I then had a coach again, because Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to take that skill set that I kind of got half the blueprint for really, Mm -hmm. but uh, then apply it under new circumstances in a new environment. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, if there was one thing you could get out on this podcast today to help somebody with their health, fitness, nutrition journey what would it be? Oh, I love this question. I actually ask it to my guests all the time, but it's never been asked to me. So (laughs) I'll say this, there's never a perfect time and there's never a right time. I think I'm, I'm touching on this specifically given the time of year that we're in. A lot of people come off of summer. They're disappointed in maybe the choices they made throughout the summer, or they look back and they wish they looked different in pictures. They wish wish they felt more confident in their bathing suit on the beach, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. You have a choice right now to change the script for yourself for summer of 2024. You needed to start yesterday. Mm -hmm. So just go for it because like we just said, circumstances are never going to change. If you don't do something about it, you're always going to be busy. You're Mm -hmm. always going to have something else that's going to take your attention and your time and whatever. But if you want to be able to do those things that are taking your time and attention and be really, really good at them, you need to have your health. Yeah. And yes, we know uh, that Christmas is coming and all the holidays are coming and all the things, but get working with a coach now so that you know how to navigate those things and you're not navigating them solo. It might be the difference between you maintaining and gaining. I mean, if you gain another 10 pounds every Christmas, you're not going to get anywhere. But if you have someone help you, then you're going to be so much further ahead of the game. You're not going to be going into that January 1st goal with an extra 10 pounds. Exactly. Have the coach when it's hard, then when it's easy, you're going to crush it. Yep. I love it. Well, how do the listeners of the show for today go and find you? Yes. So you can find me a couple different places. I have my own podcast that we are definitely going to have Connie on very soon. So we'll do a little podcast swap. Mm -hmm. It is called the fix spelled F Y X with Krista Huber. So you can find that on Apple, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And then over on social media, I do have a few different accounts, but my main one I'll lead with that. That is at the Krista Huber. And I spell Krista with a Y hence the fix with a Y. And then for the podcast, I also have an account called the fix.official pod. So DM me on any of those platforms. I'm always answering. I love to hear from listeners of the show, especially, or if you just want to talk about anything that we discussed, I'm, I'm always open. Well, I love it. And I thank you so much for coming on the show and I will drop all that in the show notes so that people Perfect. can find it. Thank you. Thank you awesome. so much, Connie. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for coming on the show.